Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today we'll be looking at the strange little ceratosaur. Thank you to H. Collins9941 for today's topic, the Lemusaurus. The story of Lemusaurus begins in 2001 when a Chinese-American team of paleontologists would discover a set of three bone beds located in modern-day China, specifically the northwestern region of Xinjiang. Many of the dinosaurs in these bone beds were small theropod dinosaurs, probably around three different genera in total. Over the next five years, layers of stone would be extracted with multiple skeletons within each which would then be carefully protected with plaster and sent to museums across the country. Individual specimens would be gradually extracted from these slabs of stone, and as this was done, paleontologist Zhu Jing would notice two specimens in particular. Jing would identify these specimens as members of the Ceratosaur group, the first members to ever be found in Asia. For this reason, Jing would describe both specimens as a new genus and species named Lemusaurus inextricabilis. The two original fossils this dinosaur was based off of were both fairly complete, and as extraction of the stone slabs continued, 17 additional specimens would be recovered and assigned to the genus, overseen by paleontologist Shuo Wang. Among these specimens, a variety of ages would be captured, ranging from juveniles of less than a year in age, all the way up to a near-grown adult at about six years of age. The name Lemusaurus can be translated to Latin, stemming from the words limus for mud or mire and soros for lizard, directly translating to mud lizard. While this may sound somewhat random, the species name Inextricabilis better captures the point of its name, translating to impossible to extricate. The name references how the original specimens were discovered. Based on their body poses, as well as the surrounding material, it is most likely these specimens were buried alive or washed away and quickly buried in material. As for its classification, Lemusaurus is a bit of an oddball. While it was certainly a Saurischian, as well as certainly being a theropod, Lemusaurus was actually a member of the Ceratosauria. The Ceratosaurs were a classification of dinosaurs more closely related to the large carnivore Ceratosaurus than with modern-day birds, unlike many other theropods. This classification is unusual for a variety of reasons. For one, up to this point in 2009, ceratosaurs were rarely seen in the Northern Hemisphere and had never had a species discovered in Asia. However, following this discovery, additional Asian ceratosaurs like Elaphrosaurus would be described and assigned to the group. Another unusual difference between many ceratosaurs and the Lemusaurus was size. The namesake Ceratosaurus could reach almost 18 feet, or 6 meters in length, and grow to almost 2 tons, with many Ceratosaurus being fairly similar in size, and some, like the Carnotaurus, being even bigger. The small Lemusaurus, in comparison, was hopelessly outsized. But, nonetheless, this is not very reflective of classification. Dinosaur size has rarely played a major role in defining groups and families. Take for example the Ceratopsians. Triceratops could reach almost 30 feet or 9 meters in length and weigh almost 10 tons. And yet, the Ceratopsians also included members like the Microceratus, who could only reach about 2 feet or half a meter in length and weighed a measly 10 pounds. Most unusual, however, would certainly be the diet of Lemusaurus. 
that's a bit of a tangent on its own, so we'll come back to that. Lemusaurus was a thin and lightly built dinosaur. It would have reached about five and a half feet, or about two meters in length, and grow to approximately three feet, or a meter in height. Its thin frame would have had this dinosaur only reach about 33 pounds, or 15 kilograms, in weight. Like other ceratosaurs, the skull of Lemusaurus was fairly small and compact. Unlike many ceratosaurs, however, and certainly the most striking feature, was its strong beak that would have ended its jaws. More striking is what was in those jaws. Nothing. Lemusaurus had no teeth, an oddity among dinosaurs, and certainly an oddity among ceratosaurs. While other dinosaurs like Triceratops and Ankylosaurus had beaks and teeth, and even other dinosaurs like Gallimimus and Oviraptor had only beaks, the lack of teeth was a very unusual feature for members of its grouping, which would obviously lead to the question, what would such a dinosaur eat? Based on fellow ceratosaurs, the obvious answer would be meat. And the lack of teeth is certainly not disqualifying for carnivores. As previously mentioned, other carnivorous dinosaurs like Oviraptor only relied on their sharp beaks. Even today, modern birds rely on their sheer ferocity and deadly beaks to catch and kill prey, like eagles, penguins, and Big Bird. However, additional evidence seemingly points towards Lemusaurus being an herbivore. Jing originally proposed Lemusaurus to be an herbivore based on skeletal structure, including its small head, long neck, and the lacking of teeth. This theory would be further reinforced by additional evidence that would be discovered over time. One such piece of evidence being the presence of gastroliths in their stomachs. Gastroliths, or stomach stones, are rocks that are eaten by herbivorous animals to be sent to their stomachs or other body parts like the gizzard. These stones would then be kept inside their bodies, and as food is eaten, these rocks would rattle around and help break down food to ease digestion. Seen in modern day birds, like chickens and ostriches, as well as prehistoric dinosaurs, like the massive sauropods and primitive members of the ceratopsians. More definitively, an isotope analysis performed in 2017 by Dr. Wong discovered that the isotope signatures of Lemusaurus specimens match those of typical herbivorous dinosaurs, seemingly placing adult Lemusaurus as definitive plant eaters. As previously mentioned, this head was supported by a long neck and further extended into a light body and thin tail. The arms of Lemusaurus were small and underdeveloped, most likely serving a reduced role for the animal. These hands sported three longer fingers and a shorter, underdeveloped fourth digit, not nearly as long as the other three. Each of these fingers were equipped with short claws, possibly for digging or for fighting with other members of its species. The legs of Lemusaurus were fairly thin, but comparatively long to the rest of its body, helping the animal reach high speeds and be fairly nimble to avoid predators. This description only really applies to adults, as juveniles were quite different from their parents. Due to the vast array of ages found in the original Xinjiang dig sites, scientists were able to carefully analyze and compare specimens throughout their growth cycles. In total, 78 anatomical changes were noted as the animal matured. Many of these changes were fairly minimal and expected of aging animals, like lengthening of bones, slight changes in skeletal structure, and increasing of digit size, just to name a few. Most significantly, however, was the loss of teeth. Juveniles, those less than a year in age, would start life with almost 42 teeth inside their beaks. However, as they aged, Lemusaurus would gradually lose teeth, and by the age of one, 
their mouths would be completely devoid of any teeth. This behavior is a fairly rare occurrence in vertebrae. Only a few animals, like the red mullet, armored catfish, and platypus, actually have a similar occurrence. The reasoning for this is just as striking. In the previously mentioned isotope analysis, juveniles were noted as having significantly different isotopic signatures than adults, suggesting juveniles may have started life as omnivores rather than herbivores. And as they aged and grew into herbivores, their pointed teeth for biting insects and small lizards would become obsolete and thus fall out of their jaws. Lemosaurus lived during the late Jurassic period, nearly 160 million years ago. It would have lived throughout Central Asia, with areas of China being particularly likely as environments for this creature. During this time, China was a richly forested environment, populated by streams, wetlands, and lakes throughout. Based on their congregation in Xinjiang, as well as their varying ages, it is believed Libusaurus would live in packs or family units for protection. This protection would be necessary against agile predators like the Guanlong and the Zhuolong. The titanic Mementiosaur and tiny Yinlong would also call this environment home. Despite their fascinating taxonomy and fairly cute appearance, Limusaurus has had no pop culture relevance today. Television shows, movies, video games, even toys. Nothing. But hey, it, uh, it has a Dino Basics episode now. That's, uh, that's something. Hell, there's even a mascot named Limu for Liberty Mutual, and it's a freaking emu, the discount ostrich of Australia. Just take off the feathers and give it a tail, and that's basically Lemusaurus. Be better, Doug. This cultural neglect is truly a shame. Its distinction as one of the earliest ceratosaurs, first ceratosaur discovered in Asia, and the earliest known toothless theropod are significant achievements for any dinosaur. This level of disrespect is truly an outrage, and, quite frankly, I am not... Lemused. That's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Lemusaurus, and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. Right off of Allosaurus and into Lemusaurus, huh? That's, uh... That's quite a change. Well, anyways, we'll be going right back to carnivores when, in celebration of the new Jurassic World Evolution DLC, we'll be looking at the mighty Tarbosaurus. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.